What's going on everybody, Tribbles in here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Ranch. Today, we are going to be ranking all seven Maker's Mark wood finishing series from what we can now call chapter one. With the release of the Maker's Mark 2023 BEP, the announcement came that this is the end of chapter one and that there will be a chapter two. What that entails, we do not know yet. We don't know, you know, what's going to be changing or what chapter two is going to consist of at all. We will just have to wait and see. So that means that these seven whiskeys from Wood Finishing Series Chapter One is it. So I took on the impossible challenge of ranking all seven of them. Instead of sitting here for 30 minutes, and believe me, I sat here for 30 minutes trying to rank these by drinking them all. So bear with me this video. Instead, I am going to go from seventh place to first place, reveal which bottle is in which place, and explain why I put it there, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, it, it explain why it earned its ranking. So, there's a lot of bottles. Let's get right into it. Last place, seventh place, goes to Maker's Mark Wood Finishing Series 2020, the SE4PR5. Probably the easiest bottle for me to personally rank on this list. Just really didn't do a lot for me. It just didn't stand out enough being a wood finishing series, especially something that's credited as limited release. I have private selects that are far superior to this bottle, in my opinion. There's something about this bottle that's just too French oaky to me. It, it reminds me of those bottles that want to do these, this French oak finish, and it's great when you do it right, but sometimes that French oak can overpower things, and I think that's what I'm disliking about that bottle, is that the French oak kind of overpowers the other notes that are going on and just makes me, you know, I don't, it's not that it's bad, don't get me wrong. This is still a really good release. I was happy to have it, I'm happy to have it, and I'm happy to have a backup for when this one's gone. But, the, you know, the French oak just was a little too much, uh, especially if, if it's trying to compete with these other guys, it didn't stand a chance. All right, let's move right on. Sorry, loser, last place, SE4. We're moving on to the sixth place bottle. Going to 2022, the BRT-02. The O2s of, of the releases, so the FAE and the BRT, both had an O1 and an O2. I think they were both following a trend of the O1s were really vanilla forward, and then the O2s were really chocolatey forward. So just think, what what side of the Neapolitan ice cream are you? That being said, compared to another bottle that's forthcoming on this list, the BRT02 was just, it, it wasn't enough. It was kind of just, Imagine a really good, imagine going to Switzerland and you get some real Swiss chocolate and then you come back to the States and you get like, I don't know, just a knockoff Reese's. It's not even labeled Reese's. It's just peanut butter cup, like a phony Reese's. It just didn't seem as interesting as some of the other releases, especially uh, the BRT01. I just, I liked it so much better than the two. Also, why it's sixth place is, you know, come on, what's wrong with your freaking glue? All right, let's move on to fifth place, which was something I've already alluded to, is gonna go to FAE02. So again, with the chocolatey thing, a texture forward expression, it's full bodied with notes of toasted oak and a rich creamy finish. I think a lot of, you know, the rich creamy finish to me, it's the chocolatiness. You eat a chocolatey bar and it just coats your mouth. This one's still really good. I think this is a better version of what the BRT02 was trying to be. Again, 
didn't really stand out too much in the pack to me. I think a lot of people, though, will really like this one. And if you go to the comment section, I guarantee you people will have this one ranked a lot higher than me. I think with the FAE-02 and the FAE-01, you're going to see them be interchanged. I'm, I'm telling you. So go to the comments and leave your results. It'll be very interesting to see how people rank these and to see who whose list is pretty similar. To me, it just didn't hold a match to the FAE-01. And, and, you know, probably part of this list is comparing the ones to the twos. And if I like the one better than the two going to the back. All right, let's move on to fourth place bottle. I really struggled. Pretty much the these next four bottles, I was on the struggle bus really hard the whole time. How the heck am I going to rank that? Which one even is this? God dang it! We gotta get a little more of this. That one, maybe there. I never thought I would be so mad at drinking Maker's Mark. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm even doing! They're both good. They're both the same place. I've drank seven whiskeys in a row. And I'm gonna film a video. I think I got it. I think I got all seven of these ranks. You know what? Screw it. This is it. Neighbor's Mark 2023. I'm drunk. That's not even that's not even this video. Maker's Mark Wood Finishing Series 2020. Why do I keep doing this? It's not the video! But I narrowed it down. Fourth place goes to 2022 BRT01. I really, really liked this bottle and I really struggled where to put it in the lineup. I had to go between the top four to really hone in. Like, there's nothing really wrong with this. And this is another one, like I was saying with the French oak, this one's finished in American oak staves. Why I personally think this one did so well for me is I love the American oak stave probably more than the French oak stave, which might not make sense. Actually, that makes total sense looking at the top four bottles. This is a revelation that I didn't even think about. Okay, American Oak, love it. And it just came down to preference and comparatively um, to the bottles that are preceding it. So again, real warm vanilla, caramel drizzle, really good bottle. That's all I can say about it. But let's move into the other ones because this is just going to get even more interesting as I just found out what I found out. Next bottle, which again, really struggled with, the 2023 release Makers BEP 2023, the end of chapter one. And again, 10 virgin American oak staves. I think the thing that kind of held it back though was that the two bottles that are in front of it kind of showcase the whole wood finishing series thing a little more than that. Whereas, you know, the BEP really just showcases the this is barrel entry proof, blah, blah, blah. I think the other ones focus a little more on the actual wood finishing. So the premise of calling it wood finishing series. And I think part of that's why I, I kind of ranked it a little lower, but it's still an amazing release. It's a great way to end out this whole chapter one. You know, I don't know what is going to be different about chapter two, but I think this is a great send off. It's really, really good. It's just kind of them saying, hey, check this out. This is like just some really good Maker's Mark stuff, period. Currently speaking, before Aged Maker's Mark is released, so if you're watching this in the future, sorry, but right now this is like the closest thing to uh, like an Aged Maker's that I feel like we have in terms of you're getting extra barrel notes that you're not used to getting on Maker's Mark. It's just a really good release. All right, moving on to the final two. Really conflicted yet again on these two but i'm gonna give you the second place and the first place in one go because once you learn what second place is you know who won 
But then we're gonna go and talk about both of them and why I ranked them the way I did. So second place goes to Maker's Wood Finishing 2019's RC6, which means the 2021 FAE01 is my winner. Now, let's stick with the RC6 again. Part of my revelation. Stave details, 10 virgin toasted American oak. The top four on this list are all American oak. I've been saying this since I learned what each stave profile on their own tastes like, that American oak is my favorite. That's gotta be what is standing out on these four releases that I'm really liking. The bottom three are all three finished in French oak. So I think I'm kind of partial to the French oak. I think you just gotta do it right or else it just stands out to me and I focus on it and I'm like, no, you gotta tone that down a little bit. But RC6 was the first in the lineup they talk about amplified notes of fruit balancing sweet and spice. I think that's the perfect example of that. I get extra cherry fruitiness, but it's still extra oakiness. I think the French, French oak, okay, going back to all of that, I think the French oak kind of envelops everything. I think this American oak kind of brings out the, the barrel notes that you're traditionally used to. That's why the BEP to me just tastes like an aged maker's. It's like you're getting more barrel notes. The RC6, really fruity, but it has that American oak to kind of give it a little more of those caramelized sugars and all of that stuff. It's an amazing bottle. It has sentimental value to me. It was the first in the lineup. I've, I've you know, hand dipped a bottle with Miss Wrench that will forever be on my shelf. It's just a really great bottle to me until the FAE01 came out, the number one bottle. It's just, it's so tasty. It's like a, you know, while that one has so much power, this is like, you know, going into Walt Disney World, some sweet shop and you're overloaded with diabetes and it's amazing and I'm so stoked. This one says a fruit forward expression with notes of tobacco and wood. To me, man, it, 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 it gives you that, it gives you those things, the American oak shines and says, hey, I'm here, but man, is it sweet in terms of just like homemade vanilla ice cream. I just, I absolutely love this bottle. So there's my list. Your next job is to go to the comment section and for whichever ones you own, rank them and put them in order. Regardless if you have all of them or not, put them in order. Let people see my list, go down to the comments, see your list, see how they compare, how they differ. I, I feel like it'll be really interesting to see how everyone puts this. There's a lot and there are similarities between all of them, honestly. Uh, but then there is some quite huge differences and it'll be interesting to see if any of you come up with a revelation like I did with the French oak and the American oak. It, it's fun and that's what doing these blinds and, and just bourbon in general, that's why it's so fun is everyone's different. We all enjoy things different and we all win. All right, leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you're not. Check out all the links in the description. Check out the Bourbon Ranch Patreon where you have access to exclusive Bourbon Ranch single barrel picks and like the best merch in the game. And until next time, guys, I'm Trev Wilson. I will see you in the next chapter. Next video, chapter two, see ya.